Hey there, this is Anonymous T. Hope you guys are all having an amazing day today. I'm sending good vibes, sending blessings, good energy uh, to all of you and positivity. Right, so today we are talking Love Island USA season six, you guys, because the premiere was tonight, a near hour and a half. So shout out to Peacock, right? So we're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, the good was uh, Justine uh, securing a brand deal with Maybelline. She had a cute commercial in the midst of uh, the commercials for the show. Uh, Shelly is going to be the new uh, social media ambassador for Love Island USA. Uh, they are moving Mara to a Love Island uh, after show USA version uh, type of thing. Uh, and so nonetheless, we will see that. Um, a couple of things, a couple of things before we get into the actual show itself. Um, I do not like the fact that for this USA show, uh, number one, it is UK producers. We have multiple international Love Island contestants who know nothing about American culture or, or Americans, period. So, so nine times out of ten, even if they do find love here in six weeks, uh, none of them is going to be flying out to Australia or the UK anytime soon. I uh, see what happened last season on Love Island Australia, where they had somebody come in from the UK and, and the relationship was dysfunctional at best. And they basically were keeping up appearances and, and only saw each other twice after the show was over, right? So obviously you can't build on your connection from the villa if you are literally across the globe from each other, right? Make it make sense. Uh, so I get it's cheaper, uh, I guess, to, you know, to get a flight from Australia and all these other places uh, to, to plop them here for in Fiji, but it's not the flex that you think it is, you guys. Like, like did the American uh, potential cast members just refuse to do the show? Is that why you guys are still having casting calls um, in select cities to try to, you know, bring in some bombshells? Like, I just don't understand. And, and then also, uh, no shade to, you know, Ariana, you know, those of you who are, are Vanderpump Rules, you know, aficionados and all the things, it, this is separate from that, right? So we need to discuss, you know, why we can't have the original host from the CBS show and the original narrator from the CBS show. It has been ages. It has been since uh, season three uh, that, that we have had uh, that type of entertainment, you guys, and I miss them. There is something about having a host and narrator that is in tune with American culture, is in tune with American references is is in tune with American jokes. The jokes were just not landing uh, for some of the things that the narrator was saying tonight. It works fine on Love Island UK because that's your home base, right? But it doesn't work on Love Island USA. You literally have somebody on there uh, from the UK who doesn't know what Chipotle is, you guys. You, you literally have people, you know, you're, you're trying to have a conversation with somebody because you brought back Snake Guy for some reason, and uh, you have somebody from Australia who's completely clueless, thinks snakes are bugs, like, like it, it doesn't know what reptiles are, like, like, like we got to do better, you guys. We, we have to do better, but enough is enough. I understand for Love Island games to have all of the different international versions of Love Island come plop in for an all-stars type of season. It worked season one. That makes sense, you guys, because it's an all-star kind of get-up of some of your favorite Love Island stars across the different franchises and spinoffs. It makes sense there. But... For these particular shows, right? For Love Island USA, we need U.S. contestants. Please, number of hands, uh, number of times, please let me know uh, that you saw a U.S. Islander show up on Love Island UK. Show up on Love Island Australia. Show up on all of the spinoffs, you guys. And the answer is negator, negative, nothing, nada, zilch. All of the things, you guys, uh, because it doesn't happen. 
but they freely bring over, you know, UK Islanders to Australia, to America. They freely bring over Australian Islanders to America and the UK and all of these things. But it is just aggravating, right? And the biggest thing is just kind of like, uh, you know, the difference in approach to dating. And, and even last season, or not last season, season before last, when you guys brought over Zita from the UK, and, um, you know, and it worked because she had split her time. She had at least some exposure to America and American culture and all the things. But, um, but something has to give, you guys. Something has to give because we need American producers. We need American uh, narrators. We need something, right? And, oh, my gosh, the abysmal... Disney Cruise opening, the abysmal Broadway show musical opening, number Y. How much did the clearance and licensing cost for that song and for the gas to sing and dance to that song like we were on the cruise ship, you guys, to Disney World? Why? What are we doing? That intro was not it, you guys. Sarah Hyland would never, this would have never flown on CBS, you guys. That would never ever fly right i was so uh, appalled because i had no idea what was happening i was like what is happening am i on a cruise right now am i on a cruise ship is this the welcome dance is this the intro dance to to before we go to our state rooms like what is happening right now and, and the song selection was not it i never want to hear that song again you guys what was that right uh but again uh, I, I just was so confused as far as what in the heck, whose idea with this, right? And here's the thing. Being American, I understand we're extra. I understand we like to put on big productions and do the Hollywood and, and do all the things. Clearly, there is a budget this year. Clearly, there's some extra funds that were kicked in to Love Island USA, which is fine. But that intro was not it. And anybody that is lying to uh, them on social media about it, you guys got to stop it. Stop it because they're going to try to do it again. And the answer is no, right? Please, you know, abort that mission. Please, right? Uh, so nonetheless, uh, we get to the intros. And um, honestly, you guys, I wasn't sure how this was going to go because a lot of times these intros are so cheesy. Uh, they're so cheeky and they just give off bad vibes. Uh, these cast photos, they, they never really capture the true essence of these people. A lot of these people look a lot better in motion. Uh, you know, even the upcoming bombshells look better in motion than, than what these rinky-dink cast photos are giving. Uh, so thank goodness, you know, finally when we got to actually see these islanders in motion in the villa, I kind of saw what casting saw, right? And shout out to production for having the initial coupling take place at nighttime, you guys. It was giving the Bachelor vibes. It was giving cocktail hour vibes. It was giving night one show up in your Sunday's best, your best dressed outfit, your best cocktail dress, your best suits, except for Cordell. But nonetheless, um, you know, just show up and, and, and look your best and put have your first best impression as opposed to the typical, hey, Come out in the crack of dawn, in the high heat, in your stringiest bikini, and in your, you know, your 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 shorts if you're a guy, and and, and let's just stand in the heat all day uh, until we get the scenes correct for you to choose who you want to couple up with. And and the answer is no. We need something new. We need something innovative. We need something fresh. And production understood the assignment to do this nighttime coupling. That was chef's kiss, right? Other thing I enjoyed was once we got through all of the long intros, you guys, uh, nonetheless, they decided to do an icebreaker, literally an icebreaker, where people were cutting, uh, you know, breaking the ice literally and asking questions, red and green flag questions. But the intent of it all was to try to get to know somebody via kissing the islanders that these questions apply to, right? So you were able to see kind of right off the bat who had sparked and who did not, right? 
And, and I got to shout out casting because once the couples actually happened and they started to talk, they started to get to know each other, everything made sense. So many of these couples, you guys, had so much in common. And I was like, I have never seen an OG cast this much in sync. Like, I actually like, for the most part, this OG cast. Now, I still think it's a mistake to have Snake Guy from Casa Amor be an OG person. Uh, but I like the person that he's in the couple with. I just feel that having him as an OG is a huge mistake. For some reason, they want to make him a main character. I don't get these producers, right? They always choose somebody that nobody cares for uh, to make a main character, to make Fetch happen with. And, and I'm here to tell you, it is a no for me, right? It is an absolute no for me, right? And so we'll get into more of that in a moment, you guys. Uh, so the couples that we had, right? Because uh, some of the kisses were hot, right? Uh, so the kisses between, um, uh, what's his name, Koi? Uh, he reminds me, you guys, so much of Cinco. And I don't know if that's going to be a good or bad thing as we move through the show because he is getting not enough screen time right now. And I don't know what that means. I don't know if he's camera shy or if he's boring or or, or, or if nothing's really developed yet between um, him and Jaina. But we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. Or not Jaina, Janae. I can't, I can't believe I just said that right now. Sorry, Janae. Uh, so we have, uh, you know, they were our first couple because uh, Koi was the hot commodity, you guys. He had three girls that stood on the heart for him that were interested in coupling for him. And I was like, uh-oh, his ego is going to get so big. He is 6'8 and, you know, considers himself a teddy bear and has a nine-pound chihuahua and all these things. And so we'll see how this goes. But I'm here for Janae's energy. She has, a, has an 805 or 807 credit score. Uh, she is a military brat. She's a tax, uh, a day trader. She, she's got all these things. She's got her head on her shoulders. And, and I feel like, I'm like, is, is her and Koi too mature for the show? Like, like, I don't know what's happening, right? Like, I feel like they could have uh, been matched together by a professional matchmaker, right? Uh, but nonetheless, I'm here for their connection. I, I see the sparks. I, I They cuddled the first night and and all the things. So, so we'll see if things are progressing, but they're not getting screen time, which I'm a little bit concerned about, right? Because uh, if you're going to have four black people in the OG clap cast, can you at least show them? Can, can they at least get screen time? Can you do that, right? But but again, we're dealing with UK producers, right? So nonetheless, uh, you know, with that being said, uh, our other couple that I think people are going to be pushing for is uh, Kaylor and Aaron, you guys, because Kaylor is the typical, you know, Midwestern uh, cast member that the show likes to do uh, that comes from the middle of nowhere and you are throwing them into the thrust of the bubble of a reality TV show uh, where they have, you know, they're not, you know, of a typical, you know, big city or, or big lights and camera and all that stuff. So they have very unique upbringing, very unique taste and all these things. And so she is paired up with Aaron, who is from the Traders UK, you guys, who I thought had a glow up because I didn't even recognize him. I was like, who's that? And I had to do a double take and I was like, oh, I remember. I remember now, right? Because I, I saw the Traders, the UK Traders season one, like forever ago, it feels like, right? But um, there was instant sparks between the two of them. They're kissing all over the place. They're coupled up. They chose each other. They like each other, right? Uh, for now, right? And then uh, next uh, was Leah and Rob. Now, here's the thing. I actually really like Leah, you guys. I, I really think she means well. I thought it was funny when they made the comment that her and Rob share a brain because <laughs> it just gives that they have nothing to talk about. But but for whatever reason, they like each other and they seem to click. Like, Leah's, like, really into him. She seems, like, very sweet and all of the things. So I hope this works out for her. But I just don't see it for Rob, right? I just don't see it for him at all. I think he's just here for the vibes. I don't think he's here for, you know, a long time, but just here to get the most out of the experience and dip out, you guys. But poor Leah, she she really is into him, unfortunately, right? Then we have uh, Serena, who preferred uh, Koi as well, uh, but uh, came in matching, you guys, with Cordell. Now, Cordell uh, is giving me, you know, a Kevin Samuels disciple, and, and the reason that happened was because he lied and said that he doesn't know anything about podcasts uh, when Serena asked him, but he also is the sibling, you guys, of Odell Beckham Jr., 
the NFL star Odell Beckham Jr. And I was like, oh. But it, I don't know if it was me. Does he look like the singer Trey Songs to you guys? I could not unsee it. I mean, it was giving me Trey Songs, uh, I believe, from the Trey Day album and, and his first couple of albums where he had like the braids and all the things. Um, these Tiger braids, though, that he has on now has to go. But that was the vibes that Cordell was giving. He was also kind of giving like a little bit of airhead vibes, like he didn't know certain things. And it was a little bit concerning. He doesn't have a good, like, He's not good in conversations at all and seems kind of clueless about things. So that was a little bit of a concern. Uh, nonetheless, uh, we'll see what happens. I thought Serena was going to like him. It seemed that she enjoyed kissing him, but it seems that she already is turned off by him. Uh, so either he's just not interesting or according to her, there's not a spark, right? She doesn't think that there's anything there, right? So we'll have to monitor that. Maybe him telling her that he's Odell Beckham Jr.'s brother. Maybe that'll entice her. I don't know. They're both from Houston, apparently. So it, it was just, it was a lot happening. They came in matching together with the green highlighter outfit. And, and then uh, they are both from the same town. They knew exactly where each other was from, you guys. Uh, and Cordell, though, said he wanted to be an actor. So it is giving that he is not here for love of any capacity. He is here to get exposure as Odell Beckham Jr brother but my question is how come you have not been able to get into acting and being Odell Beckham Jr's brother considering all of the celebrity connections that he has make it make sense uh, so so again I don't I don't know um, and then he made a weird comment talking about that he wants to buy a home and that the homes that he has uh, the uh, utilities cost more than the mortgage and I was I was just lost because I was like what what is happening I was like what house have I ever lived in where the utilities cost it more than the mortgage and the answer is none of them so I have no idea what it, what what he was talking about right uh, so nonetheless uh, that was that uh, also we had um, is that all the couples oh also, we had, uh, not Cordell, but this guy's name is Kendall, who is giving me baby Drake vibes. So him and uh, Hannah, right? I like Hannah. I can tell she's into the brothers, though. I, the moment that I heard her talk, the moment I saw her, oh, I was like, oh, she wants Koi or Cordell. I, I was like, she is hoping, right? And she was one of the females that was hoping that Koi was going to select her, and he did not, right? So nonetheless, uh, her and, uh, you know, Kendall are together, but I don't get the vibe that Kendall's really into her. But something happened. It was like the spirit of, you know, hey, you, you've got to show something or you might get dumped from the villa. And the next day he was all over her, kissing her all over the villa. And I was like, I don't know if I buy this, right? Because literally she said in the morning to the girls chat, like, hey, he doesn't touch me. He doesn't interact with me. He doesn't do X, Y, and Z with me. I don't think he's interested. And then next thing you know, he's like kissing her all over. So I don't know what that was about, right? Also, Hannah, what makeup are you wearing, girl? What makeup are you wearing that the people that you kiss are are looking like uh, homie the clown when 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 the kissing is over? It is so embarrassing. Uh, this happened, you know, a few times where these people look like powdered donuts on their faces, and I just want to know what makeup she is wearing that it is having this terrible transfer. I was like, can we get this girl some setting spray? Can we get her some Urban Decay All Nighter? Can we get her some Fenty? beauty you guys can we get her something because whatever makeup she is wearing is not working and then it looks like it was even more pounds of makeup on the second night and I just didn't understand it you guys I was so lost I was so confused because I was like what in the heck right so nonetheless I uh, I do like Hannah but I don't think uh, her connection, Kendall, is into her like that. But he's going to pretend for now until he, you know, is stolen by a bombshell, basically, right? Uh, so nonetheless, those are the couples. Uh, so the first bombshell we had was an Australian bombshell. Again, uh, with these foreign producers, they think for some reason Americans want to see all these foreign people. And if we want to see all these foreign people, we would tune into Love Island UK, you guys.
like real talk like it was very annoying because they did not do this on the cbs versions of the show right it, it, they only did it i think uh season two they had brought somebody in as like a bombshell that was from the uk but it wasn't something that was like emphasized right and, and that person wasn't there for a long time right but but this wasn't like a thing right that that just really kind of overtaken the entire show and because uh you know this guy aaron is already on reality tv before uh i feel like he has it you know regardless if he wins or not he's going to be on the show for a while right because it's already going to be setting up that him and kayler they're going to try to bring in as many bombshells to try to tempt them as possible it's already giving those vibes she's already giving the death stare when aaron was talking to the australian bombshell the australian bombshell and aaron are telling each other they're each other's type because that's what it is with these international islanders that you are casting on an american show can you make it make sense i uh, and then aaron asking what chipotle was i was like oh no i was like oh no i was like you guys where are the american islanders what do you mean you don't know what chipotle is what what is happening? And what is this thing with the UK people where, where you have to have blonde hair and blue eyes or they're not even going to look at you? As if that is a personality trait, as if that is going to determine whether or not somebody is compatible with you versus what is on the inside versus what their personality is, what their values are, what their morals are, who they are as people that make them who they are, not what color their hair is and what color their eyes are, you guys. Can you make it make sense, right? There's a little bit more nuanced, at least, with the Americans in that there is more things of quality that people are looking for in a match, right? So that was weird. Uh, so I'm up here thinking the new bombshell, because she specifically goes to all of the melanemic people, you guys, and, and the melanemic adjacent people, right? Uh, does not talk to Koi, does not talk to Cordell at all, and I peeped that immediately. I was like, oh. I was like, she's either going to go for, for bootleg Drake, or she's going to go for Snake Guy, or she is going to go for the Brit who she actually wants, right? But the vibe that I got was she chose somebody that she thought was the easiest to steal, and not necessarily the person she actually wanted. I got the vibe she actually wants Aaron, and actually likes probably Kendall the most, but wasn't, you know, sure if it was going to happen or didn't want to step on any toes. I felt like if it was Koi or Cordell, she would have had no problem stealing them and, and, you know, making the black girl upset. But because it was, you know, her fellow blonde and uh, she really didn't want to, you know, piss things off with uh, Hannah, she went for the easiest target, which was Rob, because out of the girls, Leah seemed the most, you know, unassuming and you know the stars in her eyes and all these things and uh I thought she was going to get dumped from the villa, right? I thought Leah was going to get dumped the moment that this bombshell chose Rob. And Rob's reaction is basically like what the heck? Why did you pick me, right? And so I have to figure out, I'm like, okay, so why was he picked? Was he picked on purpose to get some screen time? Because he looks like he wants no parts of the cameras, right? So I have no idea because even in the preview for the next episode, he is saying to her, or she's asking him, are you mad that I chose you? And he's looking at her like, why did you choose me? Because he's basically saying in the confessionals tonight how much he really likes Leah. So I really thought it was between Kendall and Aaron that the the bombshell is going to choose and she completely bombed in her choice and uh i don't think this is going to end well because i actually think he really is into leah and leah was so upset i felt so bad for her uh boy basically she just played it well and all the things and so then at the end of the episode they said two more bombshells were coming in so they have a white guy coming in as well as a black guy named hakeem however looking at his social media hakeem looks like he might be into some scamming so i don't know how that's going to go if he's going to be there for the right reasons either. So I don't know between him and Cordell of, of who's more so playing a game or not. I don't know. Uh, it's just very weird, right? Also, I love how insecure uh, Cordell was as it pertains to Koi. Um, he was totally jealous because Koi picked up his girl Serena when he was trying to get to know the different women and kissing them and kissing who he was interested in. And um, he, the moment that finally he ended up coupled with Serena after she initially chose Koi first, 
I he kept picking her up like I can do it too, right? I, I might not be six eight, I might be the short king, but I can do this as well, you guys. And it was just hilarious. It was just hilarious because you could just tell that he felt a certain way and he was like, Yeah, everybody wants a tall chocolate man. <laughs> And I was like, yeah, you would know since you're Odell Beckham Jr.'s brother, right? So it, it was just, it was hilarious. So I had to see whether or not Odell Beckham Jr. is promoting the show or not, or is promoting his brother, or, or all of the things. But I have a feeling, even if we do not like the brother, that uh, he's going to have a lot of support to stay in the villa, unfortunately, even if there's zero connections for him. Uh, so we'll continue to monitor that. We'll see whether or not if they can have a spark with him and Serena. I don't know. She seems pretty checked out of him, but she also seems villa best already with Aaron so um, they, we're seeing a lot of that friendship but again we're just not seeing a lot of content right now of Janae and Koi that I'm a little concerned about and not a lot of content with Serena and Cordell so we'll see whether or not if Serena makes a beeline to Hakeem and we'll also see with the other bombshell he seems to be already zoned in on Kaylor so it seems like already they plan on bringing bombshells to mess with Kaylor and Aaron this season that seems to be one of their strategies and also I feel like Hannah is going to be impacted as well they're going to continue to bring in bombshells for Kendall uh, because Kendall also said that Hannah was not his type that really he prefers blonde women so therefore when he just randomly started kissing her out of the blue on day two I was like oh yeah he's trying to stay in the game because his energy changed the moment that he saw the Australian bombshell and basically had this pep in his step, was like obsessed with her. And I was like, yeah, you did not have this energy with Hannah at all. And I feel bad because I really like Hannah. Like this is the first time, like I felt like they've got it right with the personalities and everybody's meshing well um, as far as an OG cast go. Like this is like the first time I actually didn't want to see any bombshells, right? Or, or only bring in bombshells in the instance of a Serena uh, or of Aaliyah where you're single or you're not interested in your couple but everyone else seemed pretty secure and locked in even though it was day one but because once we got to see some of their conversations and a lot of their similarities and where they were at in life they're all the couples made sense so it was really wholesome it was really refreshing I also like that nobody tried anything you know the first night trying to be too intimate too soon and all the things everybody played it safe everybody you know a couple people cuddled uh but for the most part everybody was just you know sleeping away so I thought you know they're really trying to get to know each other on, on the mental level first before physically Physical. So I thought, you know, kudos to them, right? Because usually people try to rush this. They try to rush the physical connection and then all of the H-E double L breaks loose. And then they start bringing in the bombshells to break you up, right? And then you're in your feelings because you're already doing bits and intimate things with them. And, um, you know, it goes completely left, right? Because they're going to try to break you up with bombshells or Casa Amor or all of the things, right? Uh, so we still have a six-week episode, uh, you know, a journey for the USA. They refuse to extend this to eight weeks like the UK version for whatever reason. But nonetheless, we will continue to uh, report on the episodes and report on anything interesting that takes place place so there is that let me know your guys's thoughts in the comments what do you guys think of the usa version the usa premiere episode of season six tonight what do you think of the host the narrator the production all of the uh, uk and australian islanders that are coming in in droves to a u.s show that don't know anything about the u.s so so it is just a lot that is happening you guys so let me know what you think in the comments Please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you're notified the moment I post new content on my channel. And with that being said, I'll talk to you guys again very soon.